too easy to write this off as that, or uh, did you feel like some things you were trying, you saw some things that are, they're going to carry through this series? I feel like uh, there's obviously a drastic difference between you know our last series and style of play with how the Lakers um, come at you on both ends of the floor, their personnel. Obviously, AD had a big game, but you know, for the most part, there's that little run in the third quarter where they got some momentum and took it to a was a 14 point lead at one point. But um, we obviously clawed our way back, tied it with minutes and change left, <clears throat> um, gave ourselves an opportunity. We know we need to clean up some stuff. A little too many turnovers on my part. Uh, understanding AD's presence in the paint, he's, you know, he has length and the way that they're they're trying to funnel us into, you know, the, the lane. Uh, Got to be able to see the floor a little bit better. But, you know, long series, uh, they say it's first to four, and I think we found some life down the stretch that hopefully we can capitalize off of in game two. There's always kind of this big against small debate for you guys internally um, that'll I'm sure pop up in this matchup, particularly because you know the run you mentioned late was when you went small. Just how do you view those two different options in this series, staying too big or going small? And then even when you are too big, how do you score more efficiently? You just got to, I mean, that's obviously coach making calls and decisions on how the game is going and flowing. If we can rebound, you know, going small this to our advantage. Uh, there was probably three, four possessions where you could see we got to stop, we got to rebound, we got to push. Somebody was open, and uh, <clears throat> that's that's kind of how we like to play. If it's traditional and you know the way that they're playing us, we just got to be a little bit more organized in terms of our overall spacing. And like I said, <clears throat> respect. Uh, how they're trying to guard us and where they're trying to push us on the floor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, just make the right reads. I got my shot blocked, I think, three or four times trying to get little floaters off because you get one step too, too deep. Um, and that's just an adjustment that you got to make. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be a lot better, a lot more organized on that front in game two. Steph, um this is the 23rd time you and LeBron have faced each other in the postseason, or LeBron has faced, you know, your, the core of your team. He just said it, it, it feels historic. I'm just wondering, how was it for you to play him? Obviously, this is the first time you played him at Chase, um, different team, but just how, how was the experience of seeing him again in the postseason? You, you, you have to reflect on like everything that you know we've we've all gone through since the 15 finals, um, and just appreciate the opportunity to have another you know chapter in in that battle and that competition. Obviously, once the ball you know drops, it, it's a different feel uh, just based on how the Lakers play versus the old Cavs teams and. Uh, even just the different style that he's playing a little bit, he's, you know, uh, trying to come at you a little differently, space you out a little bit. He's shooting a lot more threes and stuff like that. It's just a little different vibe. But there is a reflection of just how, you know, awesome and special this, this battle is. Uh, and the fact that we get to do it again, you know, we, we want to come out on top. And we're gonna, it's going to be a, a fun series all the way around. But... Uh, there is a moment of reflection for sure. Just how cool this is, uh, you know, all these years later. Quick follow up to that one before I ask you another one. But when, what was going on when he was walking with you to the sideline when you're coming out of the game? Was that just a conversation, or was he trying to sneak into the, onto your bench or something? Oh, uh, he walked, he walked all the way down the court with you. Nah, he was just joking around about having to guard me all the way till I got to the bench. <laughs> and also, what, what did you think about Jordan taking that shot? Uh, you were getting doubled. It was early. You did have a timeout. Uh, you, you fine with that shot? For sure. I know he he made six of them tonight, uh, and we talked about a little bit of, <clears throat> about certain adjustments we need to make throughout the course of the game to keep creating good looks. But uh, it was decisive. It was you know a shot. He was open. 
and, and flow. And considering how they guard us on that possession, you know, trapping me at the half court, Draymond swinging it over to him, it's kind of in rhythm shot. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he – he he felt pretty good about it. That's why he shot it. There's no kind of you know regrets on that. It's just you know make or miss type situation. Uh, a lot of trust in him and his ability to put the ball in the basket. Uh, Steph, so Lakers are tattering a lot. They, they got 25 free throws. So how would you guys to make an adjustment to control the foul trouble? Um. You know, AD is going to put pressure on you all game. So you like to not let him get eight off, but that might not kill you. It's, it's more the, the other guys, especially the ball handlers. You know, Schroeder gets 10 free throws. Like, that can't happen. You know, whether we think it's a foul or not, we can't put ourselves in that situation. And that's how he makes an impact because he is super, you know, quick and, you know, his first step and – we have a certain strategy around him, but you can't let him get to the line, you know, ten times. Um, that's a that's a that's a killer. So we'll make those adjustments. Understand again, quick turnaround from game seven and against Sac, and and locking in on what they the Lakers do well, and uh, confidence is how that we can we can bounce back. Steph, you mentioned uh, AD's length in your first answer. Is that hard to gauge until you play him once or twice in this setting? He was jumping out on the pick and rolls. He was contesting a lot of things, even outside of the paint. Does it take you a game or two with someone like him because he's long and quick? For sure. Uh, and it's also because of how they're playing us. They know they want to take away our threes, even though we got 50 of them up. Like they, they want to try to put pressure on the perimeter, funnel everything into the paint and allow him to disrupt a lot. And close the space pretty quick. It's kind of deceiving. You feel like you have a good look to get it over the top and gets a fingertip on it. So um, you got to respect it. Like that's that's how he makes an impact on that end of the floor. And you can't be stubborn thinking you can just keep going in there. And you still got to be you know be able to drive, put you know pressure on the rim, but you can do it in a creative way. So. Yes, you got to feel it because uh, it is it's impactful. With AD in the middle like he is and being a deterrent, really also blocking some shots, obviously, um, does that offer maybe with spacing a little more, a few more drive and kick opportunities? You know, in other words, attack and then, you know, sort of get him and then. Yeah, you just, depending on who's out there and, uh, there's probably, you know, whether it's Draymond and, and, and Loon or uh, Jermichael out there, he got some clean looks. You have to trust that somebody's going to be open and whoever it is, you know, have confidence to knock, the, knock down a shot or get to the next action. But can't have two guys on top of each other where, you know, one guy can guard two and your spacing gets kind of killed and the ball stops. Uh, that's what they want. And I think a little bit in the third quarter, that's what kind of happened to us. And we figured it out a little bit in the fourth and kept putting pressure on us, how we got back in the game. But we got to do that from the jump uh, in game two to give ourselves much more flow on offense. Hey, Steph, I talked to uh, George Kittle after the game, asked him about that Looney jersey he had on. He says, yeah, Looney is a bona fide tight end. <laughs> so my real question to you is, what are we going to need from you, Looney the rest of the way and kind of talk about his performance tonight and what he's done to help you get to where you are now? More of the same with Looney. He's, he's unbelievable. 20-plus uh, rebounds again, killing it on the offensive glass, uh, just giving us extra possessions and, you know, that physicality in the paint. So just more of the same. I, I love – you know, the way that he's playing and the way that he's impacting the game. And obviously he understands he has a tough matchup with AD and AD's going to get his points. He's an unbelievable offensive talent, but just making it tough on him. And uh, we got to help him, you know, try to secure some more of those rebounds and, and uh, you know, give him some support down there. But he's doing an amazing job. So I'm not a.